Hello everyone, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John, and yes, it's already time for another installment of Rapid Reviews. This is Singles Only Edition. Oh no, are you taking people out there? Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to show you to the door because this episode's not for you. If that were actually true, I guess I'd be showing myself to the door. What I'm getting at is that it's singles only edition because there's been an influx of new songs dropping. And I'm talking individual tracks, even a couple of pairs of tracks. I'm gonna be talking about 10 different songs today. And that's not even scraping the bottom of the barrel. There are more out there that I couldn't get to or else just didn't care to talk about. These are a combination of the ones that I had the most requests for and also the ones that I personally really wanted to talk about. If you're new to the channel or else not familiar with the Rapid Reviews format, normally we put 60 seconds on a timer and tear through singles, EPs, and albums in very rapid fashion, but today, like I said, due to the high amount of songs that have been dropping, this is Singles Only Edition. So, from Florence and the Machine to American Football to Mark Hoppus and Billie Eilish, Let's get started, drop a thumbs up on this video, and subscribe for the love of music. Many thought that American football would never return, but they did come back a couple of years ago with their self-titled album that was definitely very solid, and they already dropped Silhouettes, a track that preceded this, which I definitely enjoyed, although it was a bit of a departure for the band. This song, however, Uncomfortably Numb, featuring Paramore's Haley Williams, yes, please, more of this. The harmonies are insane. Her voice sounds so good here. And this is one of those melancholic type feels that just really makes you think about things uncomfortably numb. It talks about the struggles of getting older. And I am at that point in my life. I'm 27 years old, freaking out a little bit over here. So I'm relating to it. I love the atmosphere here. The guitars, the vocals, the way that they're intertwined and they play off of each other. It's all incredible. This song is lovely. It's fantastic. And let's make new friends in the ambulance. This gets a 4.5. Indie rock band Foles are dropping two brand new albums on us this year. Could not be more excited about that. I really did enjoy their last record in 2015, and this two-parter starts in March. We got the first single, Exits. There's an edit available, which I do enjoy, of the song that trims off the first part. But if you're into the musicality of it, if you like what they're doing there musically, building you in, winding up suspense, I highly recommend the full six-plus-minute track because it is very solid. Now, many people have described this as a more tame version of Inhaler, and I definitely get that sentiment. I loved Inhaler, but I also love the intensity here that is used and the aggression that I feel that's seething through the lyrics. The words are expressing it. It's not that the music feels super heavy or anything like that. In fact, there's more synths in the mix, more keyboards alongside the guitars. Giannis vocally is definitely bringing something a little bit more clean to the table, and I like how this song does feel cleaned up, but not too cleaned up. It's a four from me. Oh boy, this one's a little bit disappointing to talk about. Alex Gaskarth of all-time low fame and Mark Hoppus of Blink-182, of course, have teamed up to bring us a new project called Simple Creatures. And Simple Creatures is just kind of simple at its core. There's not a ton going on here. This reminds me of something that could have come out between 2014, 2015, and there's a lot of na-na-na's in the mix again. Na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na. Yeah, it gets stuck in your head, but it's not really worthwhile. I feel like there are tracks like this that have merit to them, and that's not to say that there's nothing here. People who like both of these artists are probably gonna like this, but for two of the minds of pop punk, two of the biggest minds, ones that I truly do respect, teaming up, coming together, this just feels very underwhelming. The build up to the chorus and the way the verses are structured, it's all very by the numbers, by the books. I don't see a ton of appeal here and I really don't at all see myself coming back. I give this a 2.5. The new track from Catfish and the Bottleman, the UK lads, is out in the world. The lead single from their upcoming album is titled Longshot, 
And this is a good-hearted tune. I, I like the spirit of it. In fact, I like it a lot more than some of the songs that we got from their last album, The Ride. And it's hard to believe that that came out in 2016. That and The Balcony both had their solid moments. Of course, I love The Balcony a whole lot more, but there were many standout tracks on The Ride. But this new track, Long Shot, here is something that really persuades you with the chorus and with repeated listens. The guitars are strong enough, and I do like the music video that goes along with it, not that it has anything to do with the quality of the track, but overall, this is just one of those alt-rock tunes that there's not a ton to say about necessarily, but I do like it. I've saved it to my rotation, and I have come back to it a few times. I'm going to give this a 3.5. North Carolina rapper J. Cole starts off 2019 strong by dropping his track Middle Child. This is a solid effort that sees him kind of talking about how he sees himself in the middle of the rap game. Like there's newer rappers and then there's classic rap that people refer to like the Notorious B.I.G., Biggie, Tupac, all the legends there. And then there's the new class like obviously Lil Pump and all the other Lils. But he sees himself somewhere in between and he talks about how he's not trying to distance himself from either side. And about where he is, about how he doesn't ever see himself selling out to promote a brand of shoes, for example, or something. He's going to put out what he feels passionately about. And I'm happy to see this song succeeding. It is strong overall. Even though I don't like that he's kind of updated his sound a bit, we've got some more of the trap-leaning atmosphere. That's not always a bad thing at all, and I do find myself coming back to the tune. It's a solid rap banger to start off 2019 for J. Cole. I'm going to rate this a strong 3.5. Let me reiterate what I've said in the past. Billie Eilish is an artist that is here to stay, and there is no one in the pop or mainstream world doing what she is doing right now. In fact, I think a lot of what she's doing is kind of anti-pop in many ways. Her new track here is off of her finally announced debut album, When We Fall Asleep, where do we go? This track is called Bury a Friend, and it only got more fascinating to me with repeated listens. There is some very weird imagery in the music video once again, and I wanted to see does this song stand out on its own. And I kept coming back to it, hitting play, and looping it over and over again, and I really do love the deep bass that drives, and also the crux feature that isn't really overbearing in any sense at all. This is one of those weird songs that you wouldn't think would be catchy. It shouldn't be this catchy. But Billie Eilish dropped another one, and I can't wait to hear the album. Oh, and I forgot to give a rating for this, 4.5 out of 5. Hold on just a second. Didn't Florence and the Machine just drop their last album in June of 2018? Well, apparently High as Hope wasn't cutting it. We need more music, and I agree after hearing the new tracks. The James Ford produced Moderation, and also the very quaint, elegant, and skeletal Haunted House are out in the world now, a two-part single, and I'm really loving both of these songs. Moderation is huge. Of course, James did work on that one. He's collaborated with Florence in the past, and this is just one of those songs that makes me feel so good. Florence gets so powerful on those vocals. I almost wish that it could have been included on High as Hope, but it feels a bit more like Ceremonials or even the album How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful that came after that. And then Haunted House is just a very nice snapshot of a mental state, and I love both of them. I think that Moderation is going to get a 4.5, and Haunted House is a 4. Color me both intrigued and a bit puzzled by the new Don Broco single. The UK lads have a new track out called Half Man, Half God. There's a bold statement. And this follows up their album Technology not even a year after its release. And we've already got this new track here that feels a bit like jagged pieces coming together. Their vocalist is a little bit jumpy, jump starty, I suppose, like maybe some fall starts, and it kind of has this hilly effect. I'm not sure if the roller coaster vibe was exactly what they wanted to achieve, but they did so, at least in my eyes and ears. This is one of those tracks that I just feel so torn and divided on. It's like I don't hate it, I know that, but I'm not sure if I dislike it or if I somehow secretly love it. I guess time will tell, but for right now, I'm just split and don't have a ton to say about it. The music is interesting, it's a bit weird and out there, and jagged, I think is the best word to describe it. I'll give this a light three. <laughs> 
Saving the best for last, you be the judge. Gerard Way and Ray Toro back together again, though? That is probably cause enough with those names in the title of the same song, albeit a cover song, for some people to cream their pants. Now, I just got demonetized, but that's okay. Gerard Way has a new cover out for his upcoming series for Netflix, Umbrella Academy, and it's a lovely cover of Simon and Garfunkel's track, Hazy Shade of Winter. I know a lot of people talk about the sound of silence and maybe that disturbed cover, but maybe this is where your ears should be drawn to. The guitars here are kind of scuzzy, and I like that feeling. There's a little bit of that haze that's meant to come off of a track like this. And it's a harder rocking vibe, I suppose, than the original, of course. And it feels kind of like it would have been at home on Hesitant Alien or perhaps Danger Days, the final My Chem album. This is a solid effort for sure. In fact, a top-notch cover. I would give this a very strong 4. In fact, maybe even a light 4.5. Hold up just a minute. We got a couple of last-minute additions because everybody is dropping new music. Please chill give me a rest okay i'm also excited because the songs are mostly good that are coming out so let's get right back into it with cage the elephant and wallows are you bored yet is the name of the new wallows single featuring the vocalist claro i hope i'm pronouncing her name correctly but this new track are you bored yet starts off with a nice little aura i like the synthesizers i like the guitars that are worked in the vocals are maybe lacking something. I'm not sure if it's originality, perhaps. I feel like I've kind of heard this song before, but that's not really stopping me from enjoying it overall. I do think that the female vocals that are brought on here, they sound nice, but I don't feel like they stand out in a sea of vocalists that, you know, there's so many features, there's so many different songs. This adds maybe a little something, but not quite enough, maybe to really merit a ton of repeated listens. It's a solid track. I'll still be looking forward to this album. Their debut is finally just around the corner, March 22nd. Nothing Happens is the title of that. I'm going to rate this song here a 3.5. Alternative rock has kind of been suffering as of late, at least mainstream bands that have seen a lot of success, and Cage the Elephant have really racked up the number ones, so here's to hoping that their new track, Ready to Let Go, sees similar successes. Their new album is on the way. Their last album, Tell Me I'm Pretty, was not very good in my opinion, but that was just one record and, of course, one opinion that I was putting out there. But I am looking forward to this because Ready to Let Go is fantastic. It kind of has this bluesy appeal to it. It definitely sounds like familiar Cage the Elephant, and I'm so glad that they're not just one of these bands that are just trying to shake everything up and shake off their sound entirely. I love the kind of steel-sounding guitar, I believe it is, maybe a slide guitar on this track. It sounds great and Matt Schultz is going through a breakup and he's really brought that into the music. So the chorus sticks like glue. It's a fun track, great guitars, great presence. It's been coming back to me over and over again in my head and I'm rating this a strong 4.5. And thus concludes another episode of Rapid Reviews. Thank you so much for spending time here today and watching me tear through these singles in 60 seconds or less. If there's other tracks, EPs, or even albums that you'd like to see me cover in this series in the future, then please don't hesitate to sound off in the comment section down below. Keep in mind that I am trying to listen to fewer albums in 2019, so sometimes on Rapid Reviews you will see more singles than anything else. A great way to help support the channel is either by donating on Patreon or picking up some of my merch. There should be a little shelf floating right below this video if you want to head over to my merch shop. And if you want to donate on a monthly basis, there's an annotation in the corner or else the top link down below. See the last rapid reviews here, another recent album review right here, socials in the description, and I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.